Welcome all to 2020. This is Gerald Clark with Seven Planet Broadcasting. I'm so excited to be here on the first day of this year with my good friend, Billy Carson. Hey, Billy, say hey to everyone. We haven't, we haven't caught up. We haven't caught up big time since uh, the Anunnaki series, and that was in 2017, I remember. Remember where you did some episodes right. with us? Yeah. Then you went off and did all the other 18 million other things you did. <laughs> right. But we wanted to just kind of start with this last year. Um, you wrote a book called Compendium of the Emerald Tablets. I want you to tell us when you did that, why you did that, and uh, how that's going, because that, we cross over a lot with false writings about the herbal tablets, right? Oh, absolutely. And we always have, you and I have always jived that way. Yeah, it's been our kind of our, one of the underlying focuses and themes behind our growth and our development. Mm -hmm. And uh, I stumbled across the Emerald Tablets of Soap uh, probably around 2000, uh, the end of 2013. And I was blown away the first time I, I read them. I was like, wow, even just the, you know, uh, the beginning of the first tablet just I had to sit back and just take a deep breath and go what did I just read you know what I'm saying I had to <laughs> go back <and> read. <laughs> yeah it was shocking wasn't it oh very shocking because now you're going wait a minute we're talking advanced technology we're talking uh you know quantum mechanics quantum physics we're talking uh the ability for people to travel around the planet and we're also talking about esoteric wisdom and metaphysical knowledge too so it's a combination of so many different things all put into this one great piece of work. And I'm saying to myself, there's no way this was written uh, you know, in more modern times. It's just the information here, we're just now starting to discover you know, scientifically ourselves. Yeah, so, can, I, can I mention a point right there? Because that, got, that part got me too. I, I think I started about 2003, the Emerald Tablets. Okay. Wow. I, carried around, I carried them around with me for years because they were that important. But I could not believe what I had in my possession. Yeah. It felt like the, uh, I don't know, it felt like the Bible on steroids to me. Right. <laughs> but, but in that document, you mentioned some things that only a scientist would have really keyed up on. Is, uh, you know, how is it they were talking about a multidimensional reality and mm -hmm. give you the number, uh, nine uh, dimensions of one of time, okay? Yeah. And then uh, some more advanced stuff like uh, law of creation of matter, the idea of somatics came up mm -hmm. under the law of creation of time. Yeah. All these kind of things that we're just now discovering. I'm like, this is not, this is not possible that somebody knew this in, yeah. even in 1920. Okay. We didn't have this in the public domain at all. So okay. it's just, so when you recognize that you go, okay, so somebody might say that, uh, that, uh, Doreal was not the, uh, incarnation of Harlot the master and he was someone else blah 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 i don't give i don't care what people yeah. say what what's in that document or, or where it came from as far as i'm concerned i don't really care at this point but the information yeah. that's in it is astounding you agree yeah. oh i agree a thousand percent mm -hmm. people, there's a famous uh saying it's a i think it's a chinese proverb if you you know point at the moon the imbecile points at the finger or if you show an imbecile the moon uh, you know, he points at the finger. And what they're saying is people, uh, some people are too focused on, is this really from this guy, Dory Gal or Roger Bacon, or is it 36,000 years old? The fact, case in point here is the information, if you study and research it, it predates all of our modern scientific discoveries, mm -hmm. uh, you know, by hundreds of years. And when you start to really analyze the information in there and the discoveries and find more <laughs> modern articles. I found things just as recent as a year ago, which are now in the book, scientifically that Thoth was talking about doing way back in ancient times. And I'm talking about using light to generate, to create matter. We mm -hmm. just now scientifically discovered the way to do that. You know, transferring consciousness into a brand new avatar body. We're just now starting to do that. Isn't Martin that crazy? It's crazy. Multi-dimensions, all the stuff that we're just now discovering was already in these tablets. And so let's even say 1929, uh, so, so, so to speak, Doriel and all this other stuff, people are focused on the wrong thing. The, 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 what they should focus on is how in the heck is it, this information have this amount of futuristic content in it 
when we were still in a horse buggy and carriage. That's what they should be focusing on. Yeah, yeah, but they lose that, that context for some reason. It's like, oh, you know, everybody is so concerned about deference to authority. So it was like with the Sumerian tablets, remember, with uh, Zechariah Sitchin, because he was translating himself and he wasn't, didn't have the titles or the credentials people wanted him to have. They're like, let's yeah. take an ax to anything he does, right? Same thing right. with Schliemann, who went after the city of Troy. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> You know, it's the same kind of thing, but uh, so, um, so I get that and I understand that, but uh, this deference to authority, as a matter of fact, I felt like I couldn't even use the references when I wrote my book, The Anunnaki of Nibiru, because mm -hmm. the ax was already at the ankle of the translator saying, is it bad? So I had to go right. all the way back to stuff that was done by Oxford University in the 1870s to make right. reference to that, so it predated all this other crap, and it still had yeah, marginal effect, <laughs> but yeah, it, yeah. It, but if I hadn't done that, I would I'd have never made any progress because of what was oh, going on at the time when I published. You made the right you made the right decision because uh, every time I start talking about the Anunnaki and the Atlanteans and the ancient history, uh, if I make any reference to Zachariah Sitchin, here come the you know the people the unresearched quote unquote debunkers not realizing that if you look at Zachariah Sitchin's work, he makes reference to a lot of the sources that he got his information from. And that stuff predates his birth. Oh, oh yeah. Well, in most of his, <laughs> in almost all of his books, he gave you massive references, you know? And that's the only reason I really trusted him is because he gave me a link to all the source material, which I went, I went and looked at. The only one he didn't do was the Lost Book of Enki. That creeped me out. Yeah. No references in that one, but it was no so, references. Profound. It reminded me of the Emerald Tablets in a way. Oh yeah, it really was interesting. Just the one small reference I think might have been uh, the Book of Yahweh, just in like the preface. Uh, the Book of Yahweh, maybe one other book that some of the content might may have come from. But other than that, the majority of it is like simply like wow. And again, when you look even look at that information and that content in that particular one book, you go, this is out there. This is like beyond Star Wars out there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Nobody's going to sit here and fabricate this kind of information. No. Yet still, a lot of people will listen to the Law of One book, which is a downloaded book to a brain, and people re-quote it into you know, pages of information, turn it into a book. And the same people that doubt the Emerald Tablets are the same people. Some of them are the same people that believe the, the Law of One Rob book is real. Mm -hmm. And that was just more in more modern times, somebody laying on their back quoting what they're getting out of space time. And I do mm -hmm. believe it's possible because of the quantum physics says it's possible due to the fact that we are, our DNA and our minds are multidimensional and can send and receive information wirelessly. And we have the capability of quantum entangling with different particles out in space time, which means that all information that exists as, a, as, as an electromagnetic wave is accessible through a human avatar body mm -hmm. via patterns and the magnetic crystals in our heads. Yeah, uh, every, everything, the, the idea that every uh, expanding atom that's not in bond is mm -hmm. in contact with the other atoms that make a continuity all the way back to your little brain where you're forming a thought, mm -hmm. everything is interconnected. And we, we like, we didn't, I never really understand that how a thought could manifest or how uh, the S and P parameters of the polarization state of a photon when split off, if you changed one at some remote, remote location in the pair, it would, it would affect the other one. And this is the basis of this quantum encryption, quantum computing that's now starting to happen. I just read an article today that they're actually doing that. They were actually, uh, you know, quantum uh, sending not just encryption keys, but information between chips now. Right. So it's like, wow. Wow, I don't, know, I don't know where this is going. <laughs> yeah, we're really moving at a very fast pace. Um, you know, I mean, quantum uh, quantum encryption was, you know, when it first came out, I remember, you know, because, you know, you, try, you have to identify the spin rate of the atom and the location. And so when you try to identify the location, you ping a photon off of it, which moves it. So you can't find the location now. So you can either know the spin rate or the location, but not both. Now we're getting to the point where we can, we can actually detect both states. Right. And the first image of a, uh, of a particle duality was just taken not too many months ago of an electromagnetic wave turning into a particle. 
So now we've got the evidence, the physical evidence now. We can see wave turning into particle. So we are really living in this holographic matrix that Dope was talking about. It's so real. I didn't realize you were this deep into the, the physics aspect of it. I'd really like to, I don't know about this show, but I want to, have you heard about light encoding the reality matrix? This is kind of like, in my opinion, this was, it would have been the law of matter that shows up in the Emerald Tablets. By the way, mm -hmm. from those tablets, just to kind of put a nail in the reality of what Thoth did, he initially told us we live in a holographic reality, how many dimensions there were in that reality, how they're connected, uh, yep. how to traverse those dimensions uh, <laughs> with details that are pretty significant. Um, he told us who the creator of all was, uh, what aspects of the creator of all were put into us so that we would recognize that. I mean, yep. how we were formed. It was like a human, uh, I don't know, functional manual as well. There were, there were yeah. discussions in there that were just unbelievable about the relationship with the, between the creator of all and its created, you know, right. which you didn't, you can't find that stuff anywhere else. So I was you really, you know, why yeah. the number 13 was so significant. Oh uh, my God, yeah. <laughs> all those kind of things were in there from way back when, and, and you know. <laughs> yeah. So listen, it's powerful stuff, and people should focus on the content and information. So what I decided to do was I said, okay, I'm going to put side by side information from the Emerald Tablet, uh, and then I'm going to stop the reader, and I'm going to bring in information that's relative to it in our modern era, and when it was when that science came to be, what the science is about. So I'm creating a science detail-based article and information to back up what the Emerald Tablets is talking about so that people can see, wow, this is something we just were able to do. Right. You know, transcending consciousness and all these other crazy scientific feats of amazement uh, that we're capable of doing now. And, and I saw so I'm backing up and going side by side. And then I also take a lot of side by side information like from the modern day Bible and show where that information was then directly pulled from these animal tablets. Uh, and, you know, just basically saying the same thing. So I go side by side with this so you can go, wow, the Emerald Tablets is a source based not only for the modern day Bible, for, but for many other religions as well. So they kind of just pulled from this, you know, and uh, man, it's, and it also gives, of course, evidence of the Great Flood story, which we have the Great Flood story in every civilization around the entire planet. And it also, because it says that Thoth's mission was to bring mankind back up to a high level of civilization, it means that we were already at a high level prior to this geological disaster. And now the mission became obviously to bring mankind back because we had fallen back into this low state of being and everything else. Uh, so it says that, wow, there was an advanced culture, an advanced civilization before the land of Kim. So this is just really amazing yeah. stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and the fact that probably going through uh, one of our 20 or great year cycles but with the 12,000 years in 12,000 years out and then the stuff in the middle uh, probably is how they ended up being barbarians in a cave again right lost right, everything right. ended up just being survivors Darren Kuyu or whatever yeah wow. yeah I, and the fact that Anki Poseidon decided to send his son over to the land of Cam and go okay you know the plan has right. this been a plan of theirs ever since they came to this planet that that's what they do Yes, yeah. raise the barbarians to the light. That's it. That's what they do. I think you're. I think you're right. And when you go read from the Lost Teachings of Atlantis, this book. Oh, I have great book. This book. This, you've read this book. I have oh. the book right here. Oh my God! Did you read the history of uh, Atlanta? The whole thing in here. Oh my word! I keep this book so close by because when I forget, right, <laughs> our connection back to source, I'm like, oh yeah. It happened to them too. Yeah, yeah. Amazing book. <laughs> yeah. Man. Wow. So we're on the same track, man. We're on the same I track. I know we are. I remember I remember well, I'll tell a little story. I was down uh, no, you were down at Teotihuacan. Yeah. And you were climbing up the pyramid of the sun. And I saw you were live streaming or something. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, I funny. said I, and I chimed in and we started chatting and we were kind of connected ever from that point. Remember? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That was a, a wow. That was 2016. I believe it was. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, that's it's a great moment. 
we had just been down there in 2015 uh, mm. at Teotihuacan. So I just, I don't know, I was really sensitive to that. You know, I felt like you were right there where I was standing a little while ago, like that. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. yeah. Amazing place. I'm, I'm going to have to go back again and do a better uh, job of documenting the, the information and the history. Mm. I did a lot of filming and getting footage, but I wasn't in front of the camera enough to get quality footage that I can then take and use in something that's worthwhile for material purposes and creating some type of, you know, uh, original content. Mm. I have footage of showing the place and this and that, and, but I need to do really set up and do a high quality. So I'm going to go back probably. Uh, maybe we can meet, meet out there and, you know, go over. To I'd love to, because to, to be honest with you, uh, which I'm, I'm honest all the time. I shouldn't even say that. I don't like liars, cheaters, thieves, of any kind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I was reading the Lost Realm from Sitchin while I was down there. And he okay. gave a lot of details about the shapes of the pyramids, the angles, connections with Bach, all this. And mm -hmm. I got to <clears throat> being an engineer, I started, you know, looking into some of that. And I think it would be a good trip for me to do that with you and flesh out the real angles and stuff. Okay. Cause yeah. uh, people ain't perfect and there were some mistakes mm -hmm. made there, but, uh, they're still, yeah. was it connected with Quetzalcoatl? Absolutely. And the oh, stuff we've discovered yeah. recently with the mercury and the pools under the ground and the new artifacts at the mm -hmm. Temple of Quetzalcoatl. Uh, right. And the entire complex that now seems to span underneath every, the entire region. You know, it's all an underground yeah. accessible with, for water control canals or just whatever it is they were using it for. So it's amazing. Yeah, high tech. It's Very high weird. tech, yeah. And the same, same thing can be found at Giza, all these underground uh, tunnels and paths and everything that extend out for miles underneath the Giza Plateau. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that, and both the, the Great Pyramid of the Sun and the Great Pyramid of Giza are built on top of aquifers. So, yeah. You know. Well, it's interesting in the Emerald Tablets, you recall, uh, they mentioned that they had an access way from Atlantis to uh, the halls of Amente, where they could talk to the cycle masters about introducing the wobble to close the dark yeah. portal in the first place. So yeah, exactly. that, that's very interesting that they knew this level of information about cycle masters, okay? And a lot of people don't remember these seven cycle masters. I want you to talk a little bit about them because you know how important they must be if we're on this plane of reality and we can go from here to here. Barbarian mm -hmm. to the light. Well, right. there's seven governors that <laughs> regulate your traversal from there to there, and they just happen to be these cycle masters that they're talking about in these documents. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah, exactly. I and think they, they map. Go ahead. I'm trying to try to correlate them to the yuga cycles, you know, in a way, trying to give people an idea or a conception of what are these great cycles and who, who are controlling these cycles and how we move through these cycles. And Althol even talks about the fact that, uh, you know, uh, he had traveled to many planets through his astral projections and watched the rise and fall of civilization. So this concept of cycles goes throughout the entire Emerald Tablets, including, the, of course, these cycle masters. And, uh, you know, being the guards that take uh, people from one level to another, but only once you receive a specific, once you achieve a specific level of consciousness. Kind of like in the Yugas, once you begin to... Uh, uh, you start the decline of the golden age because ego and, and, you know, the dark brothers and deceit and all these other things start to pop up again. You start to fall back into this bronze age and you start to move around that yuga cycle and you try to make your way through the iron age and back up through the silver age, back into the golden age. And it's this gigantic cycle mm -hmm. and it's all based on levels of consciousness. Uh, and that's really where it's at. So right now we're at the beginning of the, in my opinion, the beginning of the tetra yuga cycle trying to move back up into the golden age cycle. And I think that, um, you know, it's the very, very beginning stages of it, but you can see the awakening happening all around the planet. And you can see people becoming more receptive to this information. And I think where people start to get a little uh, down is they start to think that, well, you know, a lot of people may be waking up, but it looks like we're not going anywhere. But they have to remember that it takes a massive amount of conscious awareness to move forward. And just like a baby starts to walk, it's first few steps, it falls again. And then it gets up. Now when it gets up, it remembers the fall. And the brain says, I got to recalculate a little bit because we just fell. So I got to balance myself over here, balance myself over here. It takes a few more steps, falls again. 
-hmm. And then the brain begins to realize the process of controlled falling in order to move to the next level, which would be running. So it's a process that we go through, uh, and it's all based on consciousness falling to the dark and rising back to the light. But every time you begin to fall as you're moving forward, the fall is, is not as deep as it was prior. And it's to the point where you're almost now standing up. And I think the stand-up point is when we're actually in that golden age uh, cycle. Hmm. I, think, I think what you were uh, alluding to is that maybe we had to reach a, uh, a, 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 an aggregate, a hundred monkey theorem threshold where the mass of humanity might be participating in this motion. But I think individuals like you and, and me and people that are, you know, playing this, uh, if I eat this, what does it do to me here? And I, they're trying to get better, okay, in the simulator. Right. Uh, I think a lot of them are experiencing the aspects of this new age of consciousness here and now, pieces yeah. of it as it's rolling in. And uh, so they're kind of like ahead of the, the curve a little bit. And they're yeah. to experience this. And I think they're the ones that have ended up on radio shows and sharing with humanity about what it means to be serving this reality that we call the energy that's us, not this meat that is transient. Right. Because right? when, when we finally get over that, Billy, huh? When we finally get over the we're meat that's uh, going to disintegrate with worms, and that's all there is, and we realize that we are immortal beings, the I am mm -hmm. kind of affirmations. I am immortal. Yeah. I am a son of the or creation of the most high, you know? Right. Uh, I am powerful, I am divine, all those things that the affirmations do, you know? Yeah, and I really recommend people listen to those every once in a while. Don't brainwash yourself, but uh, I, I was not one that did, and uh, it really helped me when I had some areas where I wasn't feeling that way about myself, <laughs> you know, so. Oh, listen, it's affirmations like you're talking about are so powerful that I actually created a song called Affirmations. Uh-uh. Oh, yeah. I, and it's actually a big hit on iTunes, Spotify, all music platforms, Deezer, Tidal, whatever. And so what I'm doing is I created the actual, I composed the music along with Richard Wagner, a phenomenal violinist. And then I'm speaking affirmations through the entire track. And wow. these are affirmations that will apply to every area, every aspect of your life, no matter where you are. And it, and it really, like, you know, reaches out to people and it synchronizes with people and they really relate to it. Mm -hmm. So the song has been doing phenomenal. It's called Affirmations by Forbidden Knowledge with the number four. Uh, and it's doing phenomenal. I, I created it just for the exact reason why you just stated. So you see, yeah. we're really on the same <laughs> path, man. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah, it's really great. Uh, what else are you up to? Uh, I know you were busy with a bunch of projects uh, that you were working on. Do you want to talk about some of those that are taking you into the new year and what you're, what you're trying yeah. to manifest in this new year? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, you know, in uh, 2019, I, of course, launched the Compendium of the Emerald Tablets. Did phenomenal. Is a bestseller. Currently still on Amazon right now. Uh, between Amazon and my website, over 14,000 copies have moved out. And uh, now it's starting to be translated into other languages. So that's Good job. Amazing. Thank you, sir. Thank you. That's amazing. Uh, and then uh, I've got my own show on DTV called Forbidden Knowledge with Billy Carson. That's the Dame Dash Studios uh, app. It's like... Um, it's on Roku and all the other devices, Comcast and everything else. It's just like Gaia TV, but he's got his own private network with his own content. Not all conscious, but I'm in the conscious section of that streaming platform. And, um, and then I'm working on an actual movie with Dame Dash called uh, The Chronicles of the Anunnaki. Is that uh, right? Yeah, absolutely. Full-blown, um, you know, real box office level movie. Uh, so, well, I'd um, love to talk to you about that. Oh yeah, absolutely. Well, my God, I, you know, when we get to the production phase, we got to bring you on as one of the consultants. Of course, I mean, you're one of the experts in the field, and we got to have you on as one of the consultants as we move forward. But we're going to start this series, this this movie series, all the way back to the Pleiadian star system mm. with a galactic war, refugees fleeing from weapons that are blowing up planets, going to mm. Sirius going to Orion, going to Aldebaran, going to Epsilon Boy. Oh, yeah. All the prehistory stuff. Hey, all is this, have all these scripts already been written, or where's, where's it up? Well, right now it's in the process of, first, he wants to do the comic first. So the comic has started with the basic story that we all know, 
about Anunnaki, about the Anunnaki coming to Earth and mining oh. resources and genetically modifying humans. So that pro that process is in the work in the works to get the buzz going. Kind of, he's following the Star Trek uh, ah. type of ah. model, uh, comic book art. Um, um, what do you call it? Uh, <clears throat> toys, and then also a video game, and then go to Comic Con, launching Comic Con, and then we're going to leverage the financing that we get from doing a deal at Comic Con uh, into funding the balance of the movie and then probably distribute it through somebody like uh, Lionsgate or somebody else. Oh. So that's what we're going to do. I'd love to, share, I'd love to share the screenplay in, this, in the uh, 30 episodes I've written for an Anunnaki series <laughs> okay. uh, yeah. that, was, that was actually written for an American television network that never wow. saw the light of day. But I'd love to share that with them and see if it gives them any ideas and see if we can work oh. together. We're going to get a lot of ideas. We're going to do, listen, it's going to be phenomenal. So. <laughs> I mean, come on, you know, it's a no brainer. We're going to probably try to get this thing done, scripted and everything else and in production and hopefully even launch somewhere in the middle of 2022 as being a realistic number, a real, realistic date. Um, so that's one of the projects. I'm also working on another movie right now. It's really a documentary and it's going to be on Amazon Prime Video and it's also going to launch on Forbidden Knowledge TV, which is going to be turning on here in a couple of weeks. And it's going to be about the Black Knight satellite but in a way that nobody has ever talked about the Black Knight Satellite before. Not just the script reading, Black Knight Satellite is blah, 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 blah. you know, that's what everybody does. Uh -huh. I'm going into the ancient uh, Sumerian tablets. I'm going into the Mahabharata. I'm going into Sumerian cylinder scrolls. I'm referencing direct quotes of this object potentially existing and what it might mean to humanity and how it was possibly used as communi uh, communication device between Earth and Mars. Uh, and also the Enlil's all seeing eye as well as the fact that it pointed to the Epsilon Voetis constellation, which is known to be the constellation directly attributed to Enlil. So this is, you know, this, this Black Knight satellite is, the story is far <laughs> greater than, you know, anybody's told so far. Well, uh, just between, huh? you, and, just between yeah. you and I, the idea that the Anunnaki were pretty dang sophisticated and did, would they possibly have had a satellite to be keeping an eye on us? Oh, oh, oh. please, come on. <laughs> So, so yeah. Enlil, had, Enlil had the all-seeing eye. That, that all-seeing eye potentially could be this Black Knight satellite. Could and be. the fact that the Great Pyramid of Giza is the, um, is the, the height of it is the exact height of the average height of the total land mass on the planet Earth. That means you have, to, you have to have scanned the topography of the entire planet, which means you have to have something in orbit. But whatever is in orbit, uh, which is scanning the planet, has to be in a polar orbit, which is what the Black Knight satellite is in, a polar orbit. Mm -hmm. So it's orbit planet uh, around the, um, the, the poles as the planet rotates on its axis. Mm -hmm. And that gives you the ability to take swaths of information and data as it rotates. And then you can get the topography, the depth, the height. Oh, sure. You know, all sure. Of that. Absolutely. And that's how they, yeah, that's where they got the science from to actually directly build the Great Pyramid and get all this information and, and so forth. So we're going into that. We have astrophysicists. We have astronomers talking about the Buddhist void and how it might be a cloaked um, you know, advanced civilization uh, and things like that. So it's just, uh, it's going to be a very deep, interesting documentary. I think people are going to really love it and resonate with it and get a whole new level of understanding. We also have image analysis by professional anomaly hunters, you know, through our Mars anomaly groups that are going to mm -hmm. have the image completely broken down, analyzing different wavelengths of light and everything else so they can see what this thing really looks like and what it potentially is. Uh, so it's going to be eye opening. So that's the Black Knight Satellite, the untold story. And uh, it'll be myself, Richard Dolan, and Jimmy Church on there uh, with, uh, with some information from a couple of the, uh, the image analysts like uh, Chris Maroney, Thomas Jensen, uh, and Martine Graney. And mm -hmm. so it's going to be an amazing, um, an amazing documentary series. So that's one of the documentaries. And then there's another one that I'm working on called the Gosford Glyphs, which I'm headed out to Australia here in um, uh, January the 21st. I'll be in Australia. I'll be, I'll be leaving to go to Australia January uh, 21st. And I got a couple of uh, archaeologists uh, meeting me there. They're flying in. And we're going to analyze these ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs in this makeshift temple out in the middle of Karyong Nan, out in the woods in Australia, where Thoth is etched into the stone on the ground around back. And um, the glyphs depict UFOs and everything else. So, and, a, and a great story there as well, where two brothers who went there uh, one of them got bit by a snake and died, 
And the other brother uh, mummified him and brought him back to Egypt. And when I went to Egypt in 2014, at the story, I think, at Apple Symbols, where I saw of, of them coming from, uh, of the brother returning with the dead brother from Australia is in the glyphs, which blew my mind. And I always said, I have to get to this place. So I'm finally getting out there to document the gospel glyphs. Uh, so that's an amazing doc. That's going into my 2020, uh, you know, documenting for those two things. It's going to be mind blowing information. That sounds really fun. Yeah, yeah man. It's going to be, it's going to be great. <laughs> uh, man. And, then, and then I've got a movie that I'm working on called Quantum Walkers. And me, myself and my entertainment attorney are working on that. He's helped me with the scripting because he's a great script writer. So basically, Quantum Walkers. One day I was walking down the beach. This is real life uh, in Fort Lauderdale. And I would go on these five mile walks and I would get into this walking meditation. Uh, and this walking meditation that helped me so much in, in my life with a lot of things that were going on crazy, mm -hmm. this and that, whatever. And these walking meditations would completely like, clear me out, you know, and give me vision. And so one day I'm in my walking meditation and I literally felt for just a fleeting few moments that I phased out of this reality and I was still walking, but I was on earth, but everything looked futuristic. And I came back just almost like in the blink of an eye. And it was so real. I stopped and I had to sit down for almost 30 minutes. I was like, what just happened? I was like, quantum walking, the word quantum walking. I get home, I look up quantum walking just to see if it's even a term. And it's really a quantum mechanic term. And it has to do with the fact that um, on the subatomic level, particles can phase shift out of this uh, dimension into another dimension based on subatomic frequencies. And you can, they go, they, you can make a, create a quantum walk. I go, wow, this is incredible. Can I ask a question? Is the, yeah. uh, is the quantum interruption caused by a, I don't know, a deviation in the magnetic flux of the earth or something you walk through and it causes this? Or do they know what the catalyst is that causes the drop into that's another great. dimension? Yeah, that's a great question. That, nobody knows what the, pure, the exact catalyst is, but it has to do with uh, the resonant subatomic frequency of the atoms in your avatar body. And so mm. if, you, if the atoms in your body are able to match even the frequency of a, another dimension, it's possible that you can walk right into another dimension. And that's where you get into these ascended masters and things like that. That's crazy. Is there more to that story? Because I want to I add just a little bit to that. Uh, I want to step on you, though, if you got more. There's something oh, yeah. really, really crazy about that oh, yeah. might, might be connected with this. I don't know. Um, I was researching gravity pretty heavy because I'm a structural integrator and I'm also an electrical engineer. <laughs> okay, and stuff. Right. Anyway, uh, so you know I've done that. <laughs> and part of what I've discovered is I believe that uh, the atom is expanding at a constant rate. And we know what that rate is and it's a geometric thing that causes what we perceive as gravity. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, in that model, the the idea that let me just be simple so i got a ball this big and it's got a certain density d1 at time t0 okay yeah at time t n i don't know a thousand whatever you want it to be mm -hmm. suppose the density of this ball got a little less dense as it expanded according to this theory and we right. knew what that linear rate was of mm -hmm. density expansion okay According to this book, The Final Theory, we know what that number is. Wow. Now, why is that important? Because if you can know what the molecular density of a human is at time T0, and you yeah. go, well, at time T1000, it'll be this. So all I got to do is change the molecular density right here, and I'll time travel to there. Exactly. And, and the density is what perceives the different reality, because that's how the energy is processed through a molecule. <laughs> it's this right. arrangement of this energy transform, right? And yeah. I started thinking about that, and I was like, well, you could go forward and backwards that way. Mm -hmm. It turns exactly. out, in some articles I read, that's exactly how the military-industrial complex figured out how to do time travel. Right. So you, using that density change. So imagine you can just hit some device that changes your molecular density for a second. Well, now you're at a different time. That's what I discovered in this movie, and you're going to be amazed by it. <laughs> oh, yeah? Well, yeah. maybe that's what's happening when you're walking, because... The other thing that could happen is if your brain wave frequency as it's interacting with the electromagnetic spectrum mm -hmm. um, gets an influx or an outflux or something and you end up in a region 
yeah. where uh, you're blissful or something, or you triggered a DMT response or something in your brain, your right. pineal gland, is it possible that you could somehow, that that activity would change, the brainwave change would change your density that allows you to multidimensional travel? And is that not what happens when we go to REM sleep every night anyway? Exactly, that's what happens. And uh, so what I discovered was the Jed Pillar Ankh in ancient Egypt, which, you know, uh, existed, uh, it, it had a condenser, the Jed Pillar part, the Jed part had a condenser built into it, and it, was, it would resonate at a specific frequency, and it would be attuned to the owner of the Ankh itself. So each king or elite uh, status Anunnaki or Atlantean would have the Ankh, and it would only be attuned to their frequency of their body. And that's, that was the only way they can walk through a portal. Uh, so what happens is I'm on earth in 2025, but on, on one earth is the Rothschild mindset, which is where we are right now. And the other earth is the Tesla mindset, evolutionary path. And so it's 2025 there, but it's already almost a type two civilization. Uh -huh. uh, you know, so when I, when my mind, in the 2025 on both worlds, I'm working on the Jed Pillar Ankh. I, on, in the 2025 on the less advanced earth, I'm doing it through study research and trying to recreate with uh, actual you know, physical things that I've got in my hand. I'm trying to create this frequency resonance. And on the 2025 earth in the more advanced civilization, I'm doing it through a three dimensional computer and I'm doing a 3D print of it. And I'm using technology to generate this frequency. So we're doing it simultaneously. I'm doing it simultaneously in both places on two parallel you know, worlds. And then we hit the frequency at the same exact time. And my consciousness jumped to that avatar. And my consciousness from that avatar jumped to this avatar. But we kind of switched places and realized, wow, we're in different places. But we found out the same year. So I'm like, just 2025, this is a totally, this is not where we are. This is like, this is a different evolutionary path. We're on over here. So, you know, we're not even a type zero civilization. <laughs> <laughs> so in the path of time of trying, in the, in the way of trying to find a way to get back, I then begin to realize my mission in the uh, lower level of consciousness planet is to help raise consciousness and try to help move the planet into the golden age and a type one civilization at least. And then in the uh, other uh, parallel, it's already advanced, but because I came from a less advanced conscious planet, I'm realizing the fall of the golden age. I can see ego popping up. I can see rumors of wars. I can see uh, different types of uh, things coming out that are going to start to create this fall of the golden age and I'm trying to stop that from happening so I've got two missions one to stop the fall of the golden age one to raise the planet or raise consciousness to usher us back into a golden age and that's what quantum walkers is all about wow that's a heavy that's a heavy job right there man oh man it's, it's massive yeah it's massive so I'm, I'm, I'm so excited about that one man that thing is is amazing. And then in 2020, at the end of 2019, going into 2020, I started my Egyptian mystery schools at the end of 2019. I had two amazing Egyptian mystery schools at Dame Dash Studios, a standing room only. Some people came there and sat on a hard concrete floor because <clears throat> we were out of chairs, literally. People who showed up the day of. Uh, and they, we told them, look, if you come in, there's not going to be anywhere to sit. We'll sit on the floor. And for 12 hours, these people sat on the floor and took 25, 30 pages of notes. Uh, and didn't want to get up, didn't want to move. 12, two 12-hour 12 classes we did so far, and we get the third 12-hour class coming up on March 14th and 15th uh, at Dame Dash Studios in California, so people can register on ForbiddenKnowledge.com with the number four. They can register there. Another 12-hour course that I'm doing in the Egyptian Mysteries. Each course is different, <clears throat> and at the end of four courses, you get a mystery school diploma, uh, and people are just, people were missing their flights on the second day because they wanted me to continue to just keep talking. And I already was standing up on the second day for six hours straight. We ended up going almost eight hours. And, I, you know, so I stand up and give you everything for six hours a day, two days in a row. Uh, and it's just been really amazing. So the mystery schools, we're going to take the mystery school on tour now in 2020 as well to other states uh, and bring it to other people who haven't had the capability of getting to the West Coast. Uh, you know, so we're going to be doing that. So just a lot of, a lot of great stuff, man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Wow. Well, what do you... Uh... What do you see happening uh, on the stage of uh, humanity this next year? What do you, what do you, yeah. what do you have? Well, yeah. I, I don't know, you want to be positive and stuff like that, but yeah. what's, what's really going to go down this year that's going to impact us? Yeah. 
a lot of I think we're going to see a lot of incredible changes this year um, with more people, of course, moving into consciousness and trying to find out what's beyond the veil. But scientifically, there's going to be a lot of great things coming out in 2020 with stem cell research, with telomere research, where we can stop the shrinking of the telomeres. And we've already got that technology working in mice, but I think you're going to advance it more to possibly a clinical study uh, of the telomere degradation uh, system where we stop the degradation of telomeres on chromosome number two, which can extend your lifespan, even maybe even hundreds of years. And with the stem cells backing it up while you're alive living, any diseases or illnesses that pop up, uh, that can eradicate those situations. Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, all those crazy things can be completely eradicated. And then also we're looking at the launch of the 2020 rover uh, that's landing on Mars. And it's going to bring back, in my opinion, the first evidence that they want to admit to of alien life, which is going to be bacteria. So there will be an announcement of bacteria, maybe not directly in 2020, but the technology will be on Mars that will eventually, between 2020 and 2025, which is actually the start of the age of Aquarius, 2025, between that range of time, we will hear, in my opinion, bacteria, which is going to be, quote, unquote, alien life on another planet is going to be called bacteria on Mars. They're not going to give us the ancient civilization. They're not going to tell us about the stuff that's already there but they will admit to the bacteria very soon. So I'm excited about that for 2020 because that's still going to be a paradigm shift in people's mindset. All of a sudden you go from thinking Mars is a cold, dead rock to Mars has bacteria living on it. Wait a minute, you know, so it's going to be really amazing. So I think we have, have you know, we can look forward to that. And uh, a lot more projects are going to be launching for the conscious community and a lot more products are going to be launching for the conscious community kind of where we're going to be you know, backing away little by little away from these multi trillion dollar corporations and providing our own economy for ourselves. You're going to see that develop a lot more and build up a lot more as well in 2020. Yeah. That's going to be really exciting, man. Yeah, well, this was kind of, a, this one's kind of out of left field. And it's probably because there's a crossover with my wife, the artistic vegan, but what do you see coming in, <laughs> in the vegan space? Lots of new products, corporations yeah. switching. I mean, what's, we already seeing that going on in Burger King and some other big places where they're messing around. Right, right. Vegan, the, be, the vegan movement is the next big move. Veganism and private space industry, those are the two big movements right now. If you're in vegan or private space, if you want to become a billionaire or a trillionaire, period. Uh, in the vegan movement, even myself, I just launched a shoe line, my own shoe line of vegan shoes. These are high quality, uh, you know, workout trainers, uh, stylish, uh, you know, uh, shoes, sneakers, and also the compendium of the animal tablets has its own sneaker now. It's all vegan. Even the glue, there's no animal products in the glue like in regular sneakers. Uh, you know, all the materials are made from cruelty-free uh, materials and so forth. No, mm. no animal products, no leather inside that. And But they're sturdy. They're just as strong as the, the other shoes that have been out for many, many decades. And you can play sports in them. You can be active in them, or you can just look really nice in them. So that's going to be another movement. You're going to see a lot, a lot of conscious product moving in the shoe industry and sneaker industry like I, I just started. And it's already become very successful. Also, uh, there's a product line that I'm launching called Affirmations by Forbidden Knowledge. It's actually a clothing line where the affirmations are stitched into the clothing. Yeah. Um, you, you look back brilliant. At, that's brilliant. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just hey, are you? I, I didn't ask. Are you vegan? Yes. Yeah, I am. Oh, I did. Oh, okay. Yeah, I own the account Plant Based Alternatives, which I share a lot of your wife's information, Artistic Vegan, on back and forth on Plant Based Alternatives. Uh, I know. That's why I, I kind of got on this, this, <laughs> this thing and wanted to ask you about that. There's so many things that you're involved with. It's hard to keep track of them. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely, man. So <laughs> well, that's listen, exciting. I, so, there's a lot of products coming out for, for people in the you know, plant-based industry that's going to help turn people's minds around and get us away from destroying the planet with these... Um, you know, with these factories of meat and right, meat right, right, plant based. Well, I've probably taken all the time I should be taking from you on New Year's Day. <laughs> I thought I was going to get you yesterday on New Year's Eve, but you had plans. But I'm yeah, so yeah. glad. I'm so glad we finally got together. Uh, I knew you were busier than a one arm paper hanger. That's a that's a southern <laughs> saying. You probably know what that is, right? In your neck of the woods. Yeah. So um, so I appreciate you carving out the time to spend it with me. Um, I really enjoyed it, and uh, it sounds like we've got more stuff to talk about with the movies and all the things that you're into. Oh, my yeah. word. You're just yeah. a powerhouse, Billy. I love you to death. Uh, uh, tell people where they can find you and uh, yeah. whatever else you want them to know before we uh, – Okay. 
Absolutely. Well, you can find me on 4BiddenKnowledge.com with the number 4, 4B-I-D-D-E-N, knowledge.com. Also, uh, my book, Compendium of the Animal Tablets, is a bestseller. You can get it on my website or on Amazon.com. If you're a Prime, uh, Amazon Prime, you can use Amazon Prime for free shipping there, which is amazing. And as well as uh, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, uh, Firework, uh, you know, lo uh, social, all those apps are all forbidden knowledge. And I just launched a Forbidden Knowledge Vegan Shoe, so you got to find those and check those out. You can find links to those in my bio on all of my accounts, to my link tree. There's all the different projects, my tour dates, my conference and lecture dates, and all the TV shows that I've been in. Uh, currently, I'm on Travel Channel on three different shows. Uh, you can find me there as well. So just check it out. Look up Billy Carson, Forbidden Knowledge. You should be able to find me everywhere, including on your music app, all music apps, Forbidden Knowledge. Okay, I'm going to look for your um, your music app with the affirmations. I think that's really cool, man. Thank you. Well, listen, have a wonderful night and a blessed new year with uh, everybody that's in your circle, and uh, we'll catch up again soon, okay? I appreciate it. Tell your wife to say hi. Okay. Give us the gold, lady, and no one gets hurt. I am down to my last bottle of Starfire Gold, and by no means is this riffraff gonna take mine. I love this product. Thanks for fixing me up with the good stuff. ArtisticVegan.com and GeroClark77.com.